This is a primer on vaccines. In order for a vaccine to be approved, the Center for Biological Evaluation and Research must regulate vaccine products. It must be um, totally effective or prove that it can significantly reduce the vaccine preventable diseases. It's important to know that no vaccine is totally effective or 100% safe. Vaccines are used for a lot of things with biodefense. A pathogen or pathogen product adapted for biologic warfare includes things like smallpox, anthrax, plague, tularemia, brucellosis, Q fever, botulism or botulinum toxin, and staphylococcal enterotoxin B. There's a long history of the use of vaccines. Vaccine production is not new. Jenner paved the way for, fall, for smallpox vaccine. You may remember from may remember from the beginning of immunology when we talked about how they first immunized against smallpox. They would take the scabs, pick them off of people with smallpox, grind them up, and have people inhale them to give them a um, exposure to it. Fortunately, we have new targets and new technologies for these vaccines, so we no longer have to do things like this. Some of the characteristics of a vaccine are um, they can be divided into a few different types of categories. We can have live attenuated vaccines, which means that they have been, um, their virulence has been um, diminished so that they don't really make you sick, they just give you an exposure. And inactivated toxoids such as tetanus, you see a little boy here with, with a tetanus um, toxin causing issues with his muscles. Um, or a non-replicating vaccine, which is essentially not really alive. In order for a vaccine to be approved, it must produce protective active immunity with only minimal side effects. This is according to the FDA. It must be immunogenic enough to produce a strong and measurable immune response, and it must be stable during its self shelf life with potency remaining at a proper level. You don't want something that um, after a couple days of sitting in a refrigerator shelf is no longer effective. Some representative vaccines, um, right now they're working on AIDS vaccines. To date, there is no proven effective therapeutic or preventative HIV vaccines. But three types of vaccines are being developed. There are preventative or prophylactic vaccines. We have therapeutic vaccines and perinatal vaccines for administration of HIV infected pregnant women. But there are many problems associated with HIV vaccine development. Anthrax vaccine is experimental and has um, cleared preliminary FDA requirements. Um, cytomegalovirus vaccine, there's nothing available. Hay fever, there's some experimental DNA-based vaccines going on, but we do have a chickenpox vaccine, vaccine called varicella zoster. You may be familiar with the HPV vaccine, which um, was approved in 2006. And now that, as I'm making this video, we're in 2014, I'm reading that there are some issues with that one um, and them not being sure if it's really doing what they thought it would. I'm sure we'll hear more about that as we proceed through 2014. The influenza vaccine, um, there's five licensed vaccines. The vaccine pool is representative of expected viruses in a flu season. They're not 100% sure. Antigenic drift, as we mentioned in the last section, can also decrease the efficacy of the vaccine because they're not 100% sure how it's going to change. We don't have a leukemia vaccine right now, but they're finding that there are some viruses that are causing some of the replication that happens with the abnormal cells in leukemia. So they're hoping that um, a vaccine can be produced for uh, leukemia in the future. Polio vaccine, um, this vaccine has reduced polio infection by more than 99%. Um, not given quite as much anymore, but if you've seen people that had that big, um, almost debilitating scar tissue, that round scar on their arms um, for polio vaccine that was given, I think back in the 70s. Um, smallpox vaccine, vaccination was stopped in 1972 after the disease was eradicated. It's now a category A agent, we don't see it as often anymore but could potentially be used in some type of um, bio warfare. So after you've gotten a vaccine, especially for those of you um, who've had your hepatitis B series, which should be all of you at this point, um, when you get your first job, they may do a hepatitis B titer. What a titer is, it's the reciprocal of the highest dilution at which an antibody can still be detected. 
So a person with a titer of 1 to 2 is actually less immune than someone with a 1 to 4. I have more immune there that is a typo. The bigger the number, the more antibody is present. So a person with a 1 to 4 would have a higher amount of antibody than someone with a 1 to 2. And why do we do acute versus convalescent specimens again? The acute is drawn during an illness and convalescent is drawn two weeks after the initial collection. I just wanted to bring that up again this week to make sure that everybody is familiar with the difference between those two. And that concludes our brief section on vaccines.